You can achieve this. You just have to set your mind to it and make the decision. This is important to me. This is what I'm going to do. I have asked thousands of people in my weight loss consultations, what is the number one thing holding you back from having an ideal health and body weight? Do you know what 90% of people reply? Me. They all believe that the real problem with their inability to achieve their goals is themselves. Like they're somehow self-consciously sabotaging their own efforts. That just made no sense to me. So I dug further into it and I'm gonna give you guys a philosophy on what the real attribution is and some practical steps you can take to overcome it. So the first problem is a big one and that's your mindset and your general perspective on the problem. If we feel victimized and start being overly self-critical every time that there's a minor setback and we ate some chocolate at a party or we had one drink too many or whatever it may be, you start getting down on yourself and talking horribly to yourself, words that you would never say to your friends and family. I know we're all guilty of this, so I'm not blaming any, um, pointing any fingers, but just know that there's a much better way. You deserve self-compassion and kindness, and it's important to cultivate that and start practicing it regularly. So you hear yourself in the same voice that you would speak to a coworker or a friend or a family member. This removes all the guilt and shame that we put on ourselves every time that we fall short and don't reach our standards. So if our diet isn't absolutely perfect, you don't have to beat yourself up. You don't have to tell yourself that you're a loser, you're worthless, you're never gonna achieve this goal. It is ridiculous and it's very self-defeating. So the sooner we can start talking to ourselves like a pleasant, and compassionate human being, the better off you will be. And the sooner you can start working on reaching your goals. The next area that is commonly setting us back that we do not acknowledge is the factor of habit. So much of what we eat and what we do on a day-to-day -day basis is habit. So just because something is automatized to the point where you don't even realize it's happening anymore, doesn't mean that you need to tell yourself, this is my fault, I'm never gonna achieve my goals, I'm never gonna live up to my standards. It is simply a means of being more mindful of what's going on in the present and correcting for any errors that you may be um, acting out on a day-to-day -day basis or even a moment-to-moment -moment basis. I am very guilty of this as well. If I don't pay attention when I eat, like for instance, if I'm watching something on my phone or I'm listening to some kind of podcast, I tend to eat a lot more than I had planned. And I notice how that discomfort arises in my stomach and I'm lethargic afterwards and you don't even feel satisfied. You feel like you're still supposed to be eating because you weren't paying attention to when you were eating your meal. So just keep that in mind. If we make a habit of stuffing ourselves to the brim every time that we eat, your body is actually going to look for that signal every time that you eat. Oh, wait, 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 you're not stretched out to the max just yet, so make sure you add another couple of apples or you know another helping of whatever you were having. These are the kinds of things that will keep you coming back and coming back to this problem of self-sabotage when it is in actuality, just a habit. What can you do about this? Slowly start reducing your tendencies and pay more attention to them, get curious about them and start noticing how you feel in your body when you make certain decisions and how good it feels or how bad it feels and then start to recalibrate your reward system so you start to recognize this isn't even pleasurable. Why am I even doing it? It is constantly causing this problem at the end of my day and I just want to have the energy to come home and take care of everything I need to so I'm not gonna do that anymore. It's not serving me, I'm gonna let it go. And then make it a point every day to actually follow through and you start recognizing, I do feel better, this is working, this is wonderful. That's how habits form in the first place. We can have habits that are serving us and ones that are not serving us. So it's gonna be in your best interest to make sure you are forming the ones that are allowing you to reach your goals. By the way, I'm really sorry for the flickering lights in the back. I do not know why my camera does that. And honestly, I keep forgetting to um, figure out how to change that in the settings. So I apologize. So the next issue that most people don't realize is consistently keeping them stuck and misattributing this self-sabotage um, 
mechanism is the fact that many of us do not have solid systems to fall back on when we're outside of our comfort zone. So our home is probably very well controlled. And if it's not, I'm very sorry. It's a very difficult situation to live with other people who do not follow the same health and lifestyle um, philosophy as you do. But there are many strategies for that in my other videos. So I will uh, put a card here for that if you're interested. But if you do have a clean home and the problem is when you go outside the home and nothing is controlled and everything's very loose and non-systematized and there's no way to like set any structure around it, there actually is a lot of things you can do. So number one, always bring a meal with you when you leave the home making sure that you have something to eat everywhere you go, even when you go to take care of a seemingly quick errand. Just take something with you because more times than not, we remember, oh, I also have to go to the bank. Oh, I also have to go pick up a dress. Oh, I have to go to the grocery store for this item. So time tends to slip away, our hunger rises, and we don't have a meal waiting for us right there, but you do because you'll pack one with you and you'll be set. You also need to plan ahead for high risk situations like when you're going to holidays or any kind of get togethers or celebrations. It's important to have some kind of contingency plan or plan B or you already spoke to the uh, host or hostess or the chef or the manager and let them know your dietary preferences and everything is accommodated for and planned as opposed to just diving into a situation blind and having no means of fulfilling your healthful philosophy. So having these systems in place is key to maintaining this lifestyle because as soon as things don't go as planned, you're going to throw up your arms and you're going to eat whatever's in front of you because that's what everybody else around you is doing. So why not? They seem to be perfectly fine. So I can just indulge as well. But that's not what you do because you are much more health conscious and you have these big goals that you want to achieve and you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. And that leads into the last thing I want to talk about and that is support. It is very difficult to find other people who follow the same philosophy and the same dietary pattern that we do. So don't get too hard on yourself. You can do this without support. It's just not very easy. Honestly, I just met somebody for the first time in my life that eats the way I do. So I am very grateful for her. But outside of that, and all the rest of the years that I've been trying to do this, it's been solitary. <laughs> it's been lonely and it's been a journey. But if something is important to you, you go after it and you get it regardless of what it takes to achieve that goal. And this is a big one because nobody else is going to take care of you. You need to make the decision to take care of yourself. And then you can go on supporting and taking care of other people. We forget that we need to put our oxygen mask on first before we can do anything else in our life. If you don't have your health, you have nothing. Anybody who has lost their health to an illness or some kind of unfortunate circumstance understands exactly what I'm talking about because all of a sudden everything else falls into the background. Your family, your work, your dreams, everything goes to the wayside when something goes wrong with your health because that is your priority. You need to start taking measures to act on that. So I hope this video helps to put things into perspective for you. You're not alone in this problem <laughs> and in this situation. So many people are finding it difficult to stay on the health wagon long enough to develop those automatic habits that just lead to a healthy life instead of actively trying to pursue an active life day after day after day. But that's what's so great about having a health coach or a supportive family member that can keep you on track and provide that accountability for you. And that's exactly what I do for people. If you are interested in working with someone one-on-one, -on -one, I am more than happy to support you through this process. But just know that this is doable. You can achieve this. You just have to set your mind to it and make the decision this is important to me. This is what I'm going to do. And you're going to plan it out in your schedule and fit everything around these priorities. So let me know if this video was helpful. Leave your comments below and let me know what other types of barriers you are running into along your plant-based journey. And I will do my best to tackle those in an upcoming video. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next one.